Um, Mr. Jones, um, he is the legal consultant. Um, specifically, he would be looking at the legislation that would um, govern um, biosafety. And uh, we have Ms. Roberts. Um, she's our rapporteur. So all the ideas and suggestions and comments and so on, she would make note of them so that um, these can be considered. Indeed, this is what the consultation is all about. Um, I would basically just try to give an overview as to um, the nature of the consultation. In, in fact, we have used this as a, in, in terms of a participatory approach because it's important that the public um, be aware of biosafety and be educated about biosafety and mostly to get um, the views of the general public because within the whole system, they're going to be part of the decision-making process where, um, in, in terms of living modified organisms on the Vincentian market. And we're going to hear a little bit more and discuss a little bit more about LMOs. So I'll give a, um, just a brief overview in terms of the agricultural context, particularly in the area of biotechnology and uh, what this project is all about, the National Biosafety Framework. And then we get into what look at the administrative system and the legislative framework. Um, generally, we recognize that, well, for, for millenniums now, since man, um, kind, has been around, seek to improve, improve his livelihood, improve his life. And this is um, primarily done through science and technology. Of course, uh, man is also a social being and there are other areas of development um, aspects. But um, we look primarily at science and technology. Um, if, we, if we think in terms of communication technology, you see where we have um, come from in terms of communication, in terms of um, perhaps in the early days selling a telegraph or making a telephone call. Nowadays, um, just an email and within seconds it's gone. Everyone has a laptop, their iPod, you know, their tablet and all that, where they communicate quite, quite readily and within seconds. So we can see the, the, the graph, the in, in, um, in falling in that area of, of um, communication technology. Also in industrial technology, we, say, we saw where man has used agricultural products to make things like um, from grapes, you make wine, uh, from milk, you have cheese, bears, um, bread, in which case you have wheat, flour, and uh, um, yeast, which is a microorganism. And all that can be grouped together and we call that industrial biotechnology. We also have agricultural biotechnology, which look primarily at breeding programs, breeding um, plants for, for, it, for the improvements, breeding animals also for improvements. Um, in terms of plant breeding in the early days, we, we recognize that it, it was mainly the transference of pollen from one plant to another plant to get that desired um, characteristic, that desired trait. But nowadays, um, science have gone to the stage now where they can use molecular techniques, okay? Even in animal breeding, we saw in the earlier times where semen was collected from an animal and uh, the female was inseminated with, that, with those semen, again, to get the desired traits um, for the production system. But all in all, as we go along, we see the agricultural um, system, agricultural production, there are challenges. And in today's world, we recognize that globalization is what um, perhaps have threatened us, um, most in these small islands. We have heard about the the WTO World Trade Organization rulings and our bananas. Um, we um, are hearing constantly about climate change and we know that's a, a big, a big um, concentration for even for the Ministry of Health um, in dealing with um, 
climate change. Um, in terms of our agricultural challenges, we look at poor competitiveness. Um, primarily, we are small farmers operating on small holdings. Um, and because of that, you have lack of economies of scale. We, can, we, don't, we cannot produce in, in, in large volume sometimes to compete with de um, developed countries. We have high pest pressure. Um, just recently, we had um, affecting our bananas, black cigatoka. Before that, we had mocha disease and quite a number of other pests that have been introduced into this country that obviously will affect our agricultural economy. The high cost of land, high cost of labor, high cost of inputs, all these are things that challenge our agricultural sector. And globally, um, there's, a, there's a challenge also in the sense that in some countries, perhaps, particularly in the African state, where drought and other disasters have, had, have affected agricultural production. And so the projection is that by 2050, um, the world population is going to reach 9.2 billion people. And of course, to feed that number of persons on less, using less resources, obviously presents great challenges. So agricultural bi biotechnology, by and large, um, seek to improve productivity through higher yields, pest resistance or tolerance, and uh, product quality, to improve product quality. Now, basically, I'm just going to run through these. I'm not going to really go into the deep science of this, but we recognize that every, th every living thing has genes. And genes are tiny strings of chemicals. Um, and each gene has the instructions on how a plant or animal grows or works. In other words, the genes decide our characteristics. OK, for humans, it decides, it de the genes decide our height, our skin color, our eye color, and all that sort of thing. So genes basically are the instructions as to how an organism would grow and develop. Um, for instance, a typical plant has 20,000 to 40,000 genes. And uh, these genes would um, specify all of the information that is needed to allow the plant to obviously to form leaves, roots, flowers, fruits, seeds, and uh, to adapt to the environmental conditions such as heat, cold, or drought. Again, coming back to um, the area of climate change. So we, we, we can see here whereby environmental conditions um, can have adverse effects on plants and therefore plants would need some sort of mechanism to adapt to these um, changing conditions. But modern biotechnology uses molecular techniques. In other words, it, um, it moves from the macro level, from the organ level, right down to the cell level, right down to the molecule. And so scientists now, are, um, scientists, they're able to identify genes, select these genes, modify them, and they transfer these sequences for specific traits. Um, the genes can be transferred from one organism to another organism. You can use microorganisms such as bacteria. Um, you can use a plant. You can use, a, use an animal. And this is um, one of the earliest examples um, over 20 years ago when the, um, the, the whole area of um, genetic, engineer, genetic engineering got started whereby um, in the United States there was need to have a hardy tomato, a, a cold hardy tomato. And so an Arctic fish was studied, the gene that, that um, kept such species in cold waters, um, that gene was identified and then therefore you had the transference. And so that um, presented, that transfer from the fish to the tomato, presented uh, that first 
genetic or transgenetic um, plant. So modern biotechnology is really to um, put the engineered gene into cells of a desired plant or animals. And in today's society, that can be referred to as a biotech plant, a transgenic plant, genetically engineered, or you can call it genetically modified. All um, connotes the, the same, all connotes the same um, inter in, in interpretation of the transference of genes from one organism to another 